years when we just started out. Um, but we've had some interesting things. I've had uh, sorghum wiped on me from top to bottom of my arm in the summertime when we're not here in the dark. As we're standing over here, had no clue what was going on. I'm kind of not saying anything, but I'm feeling those spider webs that I was talking about earlier all up and down my arm. And we were doing the pendulums, and so I had my guest kind of trying that out. And as we're doing that, somebody is just lighting me up. And I'm like, man, I wish they would go over and like touch somebody else's arm so you know I could say I'm feeling this. So when we got under here, over under the light, I had a guest that said, what happened to your arm? And you know, at that point I hadn't really realized that something was going on and I looked and sure enough, this arm had a crisscross pattern up and down in this like brown syrupy substance, really sticky. And it smelled kind of funny, not gross, but not good. Sorry, it's gonna be bright. And no, you're fine. And so at that point, I was like, what in the world is that? Well, one of the guys in the group recognized it. He said, I think that's sorghum. He said, my grandmother used to make homemade molasses when I was a kid, and I can remember that smell. She always had sorghum that she put in the molasses. So interestingly enough, through some research, found that sorghum is definitely used for medicinal purposes in the native communities, which is kind of 2,600 words, something of that nature. Um, I will be very careful in saying, though, in the beginning, I was very hesitant to use a spirit box. It took me about three years to jump on board after a lot of other people had started using them. Um, with that, the, um, the one that I use, you'll notice, uses reverse phonetic sound in bits. It's broken bits in a whisper frequency. It doesn't have a banked system of words. Um, and on top of that, it has um, capability where I use it only in airplane mode, so I do not allow it to connect to Wi-Fi because I have a fear that they can use GPS and basically pull from, you know, things like that. Um, the other thing is I always run mine with a, an auxiliary cord instead of a Bluetooth setting through my speaker as well when I amplify it. So, so um, it is a, a um, software system that interprets a sound? Yes, essentially, okay. you are correct. Absolutely. It is said that they are able to manipulate that frequency on whatever plane that they're on and utilize that to be able to communicate with us. Um, now, I will say in the beginning, I used to, I don't want to say make fun, but there's some called Ghost Radar. There's a lot of different ones out yeah, there. That's, um, that's okay. Ghost Radar is one of those that I used to say, eh, uh, but it, it kind of has made me eat my words about four times in front of groups before. And so I, I, I've never been ugly about it. I've never been, you know, one of those, so some things work. If you want to whip it out, by all means, go for it. Is there a way of um, testing the software? Yes and no. Um, most things in the paranormal community, honestly, we we have ways like the K2 meter. That's you know probably the most basic piece of equipment. We know that the K2 meter reads energy, electromagnetic frequency. Reason being is it started out as an air conditioning repair tool. It would help them diagnose energy leaks. So with Spirit, we've actually relied because. Paranormal investigation is not recognized as a science. It's a pseudoscience at this point. Um, but we rely on some other sciences. Um, the study, Egyptology is one. And we'll go into that a little bit, but um, they have actually helped us prove that orbs are actually energy, true orbs. They've actually also proven that they can measure the energy in the field when there is orbs present and what it varies to be. So that has helped us along with our K2 meters and that kind of thing. With the spirit boxes, honestly, the, what we do is you try to correlate it. So like when we're running it, I'm gonna run an EVP recorder as well. And so what I do is when we're done investigating, tomorrow or the next day, I'll go through and I'll actually listen to our recording. And we'll see what we get in the recording because a lot of times they're not super clear, I will be honest. Um, if, you, if you haven't listened to them or you've seen them on TV, they're not the easiest to understand. So we record it so we can go back and we have evidence of what was said. So it's not just, you know, you thinking you heard something, so to speak. And then sometimes you also get voices that are not within the frequency of that. I don't know system. if there was like a speaker at a very high frequency that the ear can't pick up. Yes. That you could do 
three or four words to test and see if the interpretation was the same as the yeah, words you, here. Yeah, uh, one of the things that I do run sometimes, and I'll show you, um, and I've been collecting data on it, but my husband is the one that's configuring and saving all that. He's the technical side, I'll be quite honest. Um, but I have a frequency reader that I run alongside of the divination box sometimes. And it's just to kind of compare and see what frequencies, where, you know, spirit voices compared to other, you know, programmed in voices, that kind of thing. So, um, now I will tell you guys um, that more than likely is because we're not in airplane mode yet. When we investigate, we always want to put our cell phones into airplane mode. And the reason being is our cell phones can light up all of our equipment. So um, I'm going to do that as well. Apparently, I might. Where did I just set my phone? Let me get a flashlight out, guys. Because I have set my cell phone. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, so I'm going to go into airplane mode as well. But the reason being is, as you can see that, more than likely, that is because we are not, I know I'm not in airplane mode yet, so it will set up our equipment. Dad, are you in airplane mode? Oh, so you want everybody to change your phone? Yes, if okay. you don't mind. That way we know we're not getting false positives from somebody's cell phone. The other thing is if you have a smart watch, those are becoming more common. If you have a watch that dials into Wi-Fi in any method, if you will, please put it into airplane mode also, or turn it off. Some people don't know how to do their airplane, um, but it can also set off our equipment. Okay. So, just like to let people know that. All right, so some of these things I'm gonna spread around away from our table. The reason being is they are motion activated also. Um, this one is one of those. This particular one is called the REM pod. I'll set it down just for a minute so you guys can see up close what it does. Two different things. It reads ambient temperature. If it gets a difference in temperature, I always like to let people know. Spirit can be cold, hot, anything in between. TV shows have it where everything gets icy, you can see your breath, movies, you know, that kind of thing. That's not always the case. Yes, they can be cold to the touch. That's kind of funny, little green dot there. Huh. They can be <laughs> cold to the touch, but they can also be warm. Um, so this measures temperature. So there's a little dot right here. I want you guys to see this. It's not gonna go off, obviously, right there, unless I really yep. hold on to it. If we get a one degree temperature difference from what it's sitting at ambiently, it's going to start chirping at us and it'll light up a little bit. If we get a five degree plus or minus difference, it will put a steady tone and it will stay steadily lit in a red with a purple ring around it. Okay, And that just lets us know that it's a pretty significant temperature change. The other thing, this one we can manipulate. It puts out an electromagnetic field that we are at a high enough vibrational frequency to manipulate. So if you get close to it, you're welcome to try it. But if you get that close, it'll light up. Same thing with spirit. If you touch the antenna, it goes up the scale and puts more energy to it. So you're welcome to play around with it if you want to. Okay. So this one, I always put at a distance. It takes a good bit of movement, but if you bounce the table, it's going to light it up. So that's why we put it somewhere other than where we are. This water fountain tends to be kind of a, a cool little spot right here. A lot of times I'll put it like right here on the concrete. And that way it's on a stable concrete surface. Smaller little reddish purplish light. Um, this one right here, guys, is called an EDI, three and one meter, reads ambient temperature right here. Um, same thing, it has a one and a five degree fluctuation monitor. If it's one degree, it's going to chirp, okay? If it's five degrees difference, it will actually start blinking red and chirping at the same time. Um, then it has two blue dots right here. You're welcome to play around and touch it. Um, it is an EMF frequency, just like the K2 meter, and we'll get one of those out in a second as well. Um, we cannot affect it unless we shake it, move it, drop it, something of that nature. Yes, if we, you know, get a lot of motion to it, then we can manipulate it because it's energy based. But they actually are at a high enough frequency, we believe, that if they touch it, they can light it up, whereas we can't. Um, the, this is the reason we put our cell phones into airplane mode and our watches because these will be set off by that. The next thing we have down here on the bottom is what we call a geophone, measures motion and vibration. While we're here, I'm going to cut that off just because on a wooden picnic table, obviously we're going to have a lot of motion and vibration. So at that point, we can utilize this without having to worry about us interfering with the signal of it. When we get later on our second investigative spot, we're at a concrete well we'll utilize the motion and vibration meter on that. 
The last piece of equipment, if you want to call it that, is the K2 meter. It's the most basic piece of equipment. You guys have probably seen one, I'm sure. Measures electromagnetic frequency just like the two blue dots on here. Um, we are at, not at a high enough vibrational frequency. Now if you take it, and like I said before, and you shake it and rattle it really hard, um, it takes a lot. If you notice right here, I don't like to beat it up, but do you see how it's not lighting up? It, just the green control. But if I were to drop it on a hard surface or something, yeah, it's going to light up. But it has a range. You have a green, a yellow, an orange, and a red. The more energy that goes to it, the higher up the range it goes. When you utilize this for an investigation, and hopefully somebody will come talk to us, we'll do that, you always want to ask them to put it to a specific color and answer your question. If this is so-and-so, or if this, or if that, can you light it up to this color? And that's how you qualify those responses. The other things we've got is we have some toys and we have our recorder. Now our EVP recorder, real quick, I'm going to start that guys and then we'll jump into our investigation. But I want you to say your, what'd you get? <coughs> None. Okay, just, did you hear something? No. No? Okay. Okay. Just getting a vibe? Mm -hmm. Alright, so on this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say where we're at. And then I'm going to hand you guys the recorder, if you don't mind. I want you to say a sentence for me. It can be something silly. It can be, you know, hi, my name is so-and-so. It can be whatever. But what it is, is it's letting me get a baseline of your voice. Temperature, right there. There you go. That's a one degree difference, guys. See how it's just kind of beeping. If that's someone, birds or squirrels, yeah. A lot of wildlife around. We'll talk about that too. If that's somebody over there manipulating the temperature, can you please light up the green light on there for us by touching that? Not sure who we have in spirit here yet. We'll kind of introduce ourselves real quick. We're going to do a recording as well. But if we have someone in spirit over there that wants to talk with us, can you light it up to green please on the rim pod? If you don't want to talk with us, you're just over there kind of hanging out. Can you let us know by one yellow signal and we won't bother you. But if you want to talk, can you light it up green? It's picking up temperature. Let's see. We'll see. Okay. All right. Now that is fluctuating between a one and a five degree. See how it's not staying solidly on but it's like they're kind of close enough to where they're, where it's picking up a strong difference. It's kind of backing off now. We'll see. All right, I'm gonna start the recording anyway. Sorry about that, guys. What I was gonna say. Sorry. Is now your The shadows. Oh. <laughs> so what I want you to do is say something so I can hear your voice. When I go to listen to it, Tomorrow or the next day, I have a record of what your voice sounds like. So if I hear something, then I'm not going, is that somebody or is that one of her, one of us? Okay. All right. We are at Lighthouse Park. I'm going to pass the recording now to our friends with us tonight. Paul Stutz. Mars is in straight elevation over us. Very good. McKenna Lassiter and I am very excited tonight. <laughs> James Lassiter and I feel a little weird being here, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, guys. Now I have your voice. I'm just going to set this over here, and that's going to pick up anything that we might get, okay? The only thing I always like to remind people while we're recording, it's hard, but try not to whisper. If you do whisper, just mark it. Say, McKenna whispered, you know, something. I'll try to, but I'm not always super quick about it. Um, <clears throat> but I've noticed that if one person whispers, it becomes a habit. Everybody whispers. When spirit voice comes over, most of the time it is in a whispered frequency. So that makes it difficult for me to get in there and really kind of see, is that us or is that, you know, somebody else? Do you want me to document that I'm wearing jingle bells? Yes, if you want to, that's perfect. Okay. Yes. I'm but wearing jingle bells. That's good. Okay, there you go. Excellent. All right. So what we're going to do, guys, is first of all, we're going to start off with the equipment we have here. We have Molly's doll. This is Cindy. And if you guys want to, we can try a little bit of an exercise. Um, I don't think it's going to rain. I think it's just coming out of the trees. Like, rain, rain, stay away. 
So if you guys want to, um, we're gonna see if we can get them comfortable. So I know you introduced yourself on the recording, but if you don't mind, would you mind just kind of introducing yourself out here? I know it feels crazy, but just, hi guys, I'm Paul, I'm McKenna. It's just that Go ahead, Dad. Sure. <laughs> Hello, I'm Paul. We're from North Carolina, Greensboro. We've been to Charleston, Savannah, Winston-Salem, Greensboro on ghost tours. We'd be very interested in any kind of activity that can be displayed. Okay. I'm McKenna and I am open to communication. Just don't scare me. Perfect. I'm James and I'm open to communication and want to experience something. Very cool. And I'm Heather, just in case we have any of our spirit friends here that aren't familiar with who I am as well. Um, we ask for only the good and only the light. And we open our session of communication. We have some toys here. We have some equipment here. As always, I like to apologize for the parlor tricks, as I put it, guys. Um, it is just a method so that we can see the continuity of life. And we are able to visualize that you guys are physically here. Thank you. Um, if you are comfortable and would like to talk with us, whomever is at the REM pod, could you please light that up to green for us? We just want to go signal that whomever that is, is ready to talk with us. If you're not sure that you want to talk, but you don't mind hanging around with us for a little bit, can you give us a yellow signal over there? I'm just curious, Molly, if you came with us, sweetie, if you happen to be here, can you show us what piece of equipment you are nearest to by lighting it up? And just so you know, I have the motion and vibration turned off on this one. Sam, same thing for you if you happen to be here with us. Captain Rasmussen, if you're around, I call you over. Please feel free to come visit with us. I know it's a little wet over here, but join us. Light up a cigar. I'm sure these folks would love to meet you. Any of our spirits that are children, come on over. Talk with us. We have fun stuff to play with over here. We mean no harm. Any of our natives? Any of our lighthouse keepers? All right, if somebody's still over at that REM pod, can you get close to it again so that it can pick up your temperature? Do you want me to ask if they want me to stop taking pictures? You're welcome to ask whatever you want to. That's awesome that you're you're ready to jump in. Usually people don't ask anything, they just like. <laughs> if you want me to stop taking pictures, light it up yellow or rain on me. <laughs> now that's gonna happen, so don't take that as as they don't want pictures, because you never know. Okay, I'm gonna continue taking pictures until you light it up yellow. Or you could say, if you were sitting on the swing beside me, light it up red. That's a good one, good job. Thanks yeah. Captain Rasmussen, if you're around with us right now, oh, there's our temperature. And that's a steady tone, so that's our five degree difference. So I guess it's who was on the swing with me. No, that's just Maybe. the temperature. Oh, All right, if you're letting us know that you were actually on the swings next to them, can you please give us a light over there? I'll let you choose first so that we know you're there. You can do whatever color you like. Over on the rim pot over there. All you have to do is touch the antenna right there or the top of the REM pod. Either of those will actually signify a signal. Pick the color if you can see it on there. And if you're comfortable, if you want to come a little closer, we have two devices right here that you can also light up. If we have anyone in spirit that's here at the table with us, I'm going to move my bag so you can make yourself comfortable. Would you please come over and light our K2 meter up? All you have to do is touch that. If you would, if you would bring that up to the second green, just to see that you're there. We'll use green as go. Go as in you want to talk, not go as in you want us to leave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
if it's energy, if you guys are low on energy, I know it's rainy, I know there hasn't been a lot of you know folks around tonight probably throughout here to pull energy from. If you need us to put some energy out into the environment for you to enable you guys to talk with us, can you do something to let us know real quick? <coughs> can you go back over to the REM pod if that seems to be the easiest? Okay, thank you for going back next to the REM pod. All right, so I'm gonna take the baseball. We're gonna put some energy out here for you, okay? All right, if this is helping, would you please, when you are able, give me a green light on the REM pod so that you can tell me that this is working to put some energy out there for you guys to grab. When you're able, see if you can light the green light up. Now don't harm yourself, don't put yourself in any kind of, you know, uncomfort, discomfort. Five degree temperature again. That should mean that you're really close to that REM pod right there. Can you light it up yet to green? If this is helping, can you signal me that it is? If you're wondering, obviously, just as I'd mentioned, um, they can pull energy from our batteries, from our, you know, from cameras, from us, you know, that kind of thing. Um, spirit energy is just like ours. We have days where we're tired. We have days where, you know, we don't have a lot of energy. They're the same way. They pull from the environment. Um, this particular exercise that I do, um, I am just basically putting out some energy for them to be able to utilize. There is a device called an EM pump that um, some investigators do use and it actually pumps out electromagnetic frequency. I don't like them though because a lot of the equipment we use reads electromagnetic frequency and people don't realize that when it pulses out there it can set off our equipment. So I tend to choose to go the old school way as far as providing energy for our friends. So what is this symbolizing with it going, I mean it looks like it's going down since we've been here. Let's see. That is the temperature. Okay. And it will fluctuate a little bit, obviously. I mean, it's it's getting slightly cooler as the right. night goes on. It does have the one and five degree markers like that does as well. Okay. Um, but what we want to see is a dramatic change on it. Thank you. Are you able to light up the green yet? But you want to watch, let's see if we can get, we're not going to spend a ton of time here, but I do want to run the spirit box. I do want to try pendulums with you guys. Um, and then we'll, you know, head into town in a few. But um, I want to see if we can kind of get them, let's come up with a number. Um, I would say let's try to go up instead of down because it's already going downward. So let's try to come up with the temperature. Obviously, we're not going to be here long enough to see like a 10 degree difference. It's like 44 degrees. Um, yeah, or anything like that. <laughs> but if you guys want to come up with a number that's, you know, a four or five degree difference, let's see if they can work up towards that number at all. Just out of curiosity. We've had a Where six degree 16? difference on a 39 degree night going upwards. I always go reverse of what the temperature is doing. And we've had a 10 degree difference going colder on an August night in an old building with no air conditioning with seven of us sitting in a 10 by 10 room. Okay, let's say 72 to 65. What? What's this 74. 74. Okay, so we want to go up. Yeah, so 74. Answer. Mm -hmm. Can we please go upwards to 74 if you guys are able to while we're here? And we're on the EDI. That one's not going to tell us a temperature per se, but thank you for letting us know that you're there. So 74. So remember, right now we're at 68.9. Okay, guys? Help me remember that. All right, if you're going to try to manipulate that temperature upwards, can you give us a... 69 real quick on there 69.0 just so we know that you're going to work on that wow thank you can we get a 69.0 just to see if we can oh yeah can you hold it at 69.0 for just a moment hold it there 69.0 Right, can we climb up from there and see if we can get to 74? Mm 
Now, like I said, don't do anything that's going to hurt or harm, but if you don't mind and you have the energy available and you can manipulate that temperature, we would love to see it go upwards. All right. The next thing, while they're working on that, let's see if we can figure out who's here with us. We'll run the spirit box for a moment. I have been recording, so we're trying to collectively pick up anything that might be out in the environment. I don't like to run this a ton, I'll be quite honest. It pulls a lot of energy from them, and it can be a little annoying. Some people like it, some people don't. So we'll run it for a few minutes. You can totally see what you think. I'm not gonna say what the responses are. I want you guys, if you hear something, say something. Now, I will try to keep conversation flowing. Obviously, if they answer a question, I'm not just gonna ignore, but I'm not gonna call out what I heard them say. So if you hear it, please do say something. All right. I do always like to show people as well um, that I am in airplane mode once I get this fired up, okay? So I feel like that's important so you know it's not reaching through my GPS or anything like that. So let me turn it up so you can hear. Oh, sorry, turn it up a little loud. All right. My screen's like, wet. What? Hello, guys. All right, can you guys see my airplane right there? Yes. Okay. I'm just going to set it down right there. Hello, everybody. Can we get a hello? Can we get a hello? How many of our friends, I'm just gonna make sure that's not vibration. I always like to put that a little further. How many of our friends here in spirit do we have with us tonight? I heard a yes. I'm oh, sorry. But how many do we have here? Can you tell us? Can you guys hear okay? Yeah, I'm done. You're done? I'm, I'm done. Are you okay? Can we turn it off? <laughs> no. no. Keep it going. She'll handle it. It's not going to harm you in any way. I know. And I'm very protective of what energies we entertain. So. I am of light. <laughs> I am just putting that out there. Perfect. <laughs> Molly, are you here, sweetie? Say no and no. Sorry. Have it. All right, Sam, are you here? Yes. How about Captain Rasmussen? Captain, where are you at? Is Captain over at the rim pod? I see by the tree. Can you tell us if you're going by where I'm standing? <clears throat> is Captain to my left, my right, behind these guys, or behind me? Right of us? Right? Of us? right? You said right of us. Now, do you mean right of them or right of me? Right beside the tree. No, I heard right of us. Are you picking up something there? Can you show yourself? Whomever is over there, are you able to manifest for us? Captain, if that's you, can you manifest? Molly or Sam? Yeah. So you guys haven't answered us yet. How many of our friends in spirit do we have right now? Who's at the REM pod, guys? Sam, if that's you over at the REM pod, can you light it up for me green real quick? And then Molly, if you're over here at the table for us, are you guys going to work on the temperature on this, sweetie? I'm 
still went to ask her a question. Well, maybe they found out that What's your name? Yeah, he said, what's your name? Oh, did he? Yes. Paul. Did you hear it say Did you hear her say Paul and Molly said, yeah? Yep. Yes, Molly, that's correct. Good job, sweetie. Molly, are you running around? Okay, so you're the shadow that I'm seeing? Molly, are you the shadow that I'm seeing? She's running around us. Oh, I see. Molly, are you able to show yourself to us, sweetheart? Do you have enough energy to do that? You? Behind you? No, ma'am. I need you in front of me. Molly, please go in front of me. <laughs> Are you behind me, Molly, or behind them, sweetie? Can you say who you're behind? No one. Okay. Molly, sweetie, do you see Cindy? That's her doll right there, Cindy. Mom's. Molly, do you feel like playing with Cindy? Can you lay Cindy down night-night? You think you could lay her down? Is it time for her to go night-night? I heard no. Say go or no. Wonder who the male voice is. Sam is one. Uh, Captain, are you still here? Captain, can they hear your voice, please, sir? Thank you, Molly. Where's Captain? Is he still here? I don't hear him. Captain, if you don't want to talk with us right here, can you light that up over there if that was you at the REM pod? I'm feeling like that's been Captain over there. Am I right or wrong? Did you hear say it was me? He just said I won't say anything. Is, is somebody at the picnic table behind us right here? Sitting down. Is that Captain? Captain, would you please come over here if you don't mind? Tell you what, guys, can you show our friends here that you guys can see us right now in real time? That's always fascinating to us, never gets old. Can you tell us? What, thank you, Captain, um, what your favorite glow stick color that we have on is tonight? Molly, what's your favorite color, sweetie? Man with balls on. <laughs> Molly, what's your favorite color of glow necklace, sweetie? Molly, are you playing with my necklace? Do you see? No, that's just me. Just kidding. Just kidding, Molly. All right, let's try that real quick. And then we'll head on and we'll check out our... Let me ask her. Uh, yeah. Molly, what year did you die? Something. I'm not scared of you. What year did you die?
Molly, sweetheart. If you're comfortable, you are welcome to answer that. If you're not comfortable, I know that's a question that we've never posed to you, but you are welcome to answer it if you're comfortable, and if not, that's fine too, sweetheart. I know it sounds silly, but I never ask spirit. I'm a, I'm a weird investigator, but I don't have a comfortability with asking, especially children, um, what happened to them. I, I can tell you what happened through research, um, sometimes, depending on who it is. But it's one of those things that I just have a weird... It is just my personal hang up with it, but <clears throat> I guess I'm different than most. That's usually the first question that people ask, especially on TV. Molly, um, what holiday is coming up? What holiday is coming up? Molly, can you say it again, sweetie? I don't know if they caught it or not. You are correct. Did she? Yeah. I didn't hear it. Yeah, well, I job, heard sweetheart. a. I heard a. I recorded it, so I can clip it and send it to you guys. Thank you. See, it's coming up quick, isn't it, guys? All right, so what I want you guys to do real quick, and then we'll head out from Lighthouse Park. We'll let you get some photos before we go. But take your glow necklace for just a minute, if you will. Hold it between your thumb and your index finger. And I know this is wet. Usually I teach people, and if you don't want to touch the picnic table, perfectly fine. Um, I tend to be wobbly, so if I'm not going to do this, then I usually use my hip as kind of a bump out, or you know, whatever helps to brace. But you want to leave it dangling a good little bit. Don't worry about whether you're moving it, whether they're moving it, or anything of that nature. I was like, oh my gosh, there's a spider <laughs> on me, but it's just the jar. <laughs> <laughs> but what I want you to do is just let it do what it's going to do. Don't fret over whether you're stopping it, moving it, whatever. Okay? What you're watching for is tugging, pulling, heaviness, something of that nature, okay? Um, that lets you know that they are on the other end of that glow necklace. Now, once you feel that, we'll start to try to qualify if they happen to play around with it. Okay? I'm going to take mine out of the mix because you're not going to know whether I'm moving it or not. But I just wanted to show you guys how I take it. Okay? All right. So, Sam and Molly, I know you guys are over here and seem willing to talk with us and play. Captain, if you want to, come on over. There are three glow necklaces right now. If you would... Whether you guys work together and pick one or whether you want to move all three, would you please go over and let them know that you are at a glow necklace? Give some tugging. Let them know you're there by pulling on it. You can tell us what color you're at if you want to. And then when you get to that one, if you would, once you've let them know you're there, can you make it move in a, let's see, hang on, I don't want to do it in any direction they're going, they're all kind of still right now. Let's do, who's just going, clock, let's go opposite. Large counterclockwise circle, just to start off, just so we know you're there. Shut up, man. All right, now make it a large circle so they know that you're there. I want them to be able to feel the tension on the glow necklace. Can we get some good movement on one of them? Tell you what, you pick how you want to move it. And we're going to get you to stop it once you get it going well. Whichever color you like, whichever person you're comfortable with, thank you. And give us a good bit of movement before we go. Does your camera flash? 
Does it? Your camera is doing something. I just got it. I don't know what it's doing. Okay. So. I saw it red and then like lights come on. I didn't, but I wasn't listening. I'll go back and listen. But I did not hear it. Do you have a hair bow in your hair? Oh, yeah. I did not hear it, but that doesn't mean that you did. Yes. Molly, did you say hair bow? Yes. Okay. Do you like my hair bow? Do you want me to jingle my hair bow again? Is that where the bells are? What just fell? That was my little charm. Ah, yay! Molly, did you do that, sweet pea? Let me get my flashlight. Let's see where it went. I heard it drop. I love it. How many knots did you have? Uh, no, I mean, it like fell off of. Oh, cool. Wow, so she didn't take the string. Molly, what charm did you get, sweetie? What did you have? Um, a hair bow comb. The one that's like the little... The little with the jewels on it? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Very cool, Molly. All right, well, hang on. Let's see here. I'm going to grab it. That it's... means you get to keep it, sweet pea. Yeah. All right, you earned that one. <laughs> Good job. You want me to put it with Cindy? Good job picking that one. Apparently you picked the favorite. I'm gonna put it right there. I'll jingle my bells for you. Molly, how about we put it, do you wanna wear it for the rest of the night? The cone? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I mean, if she wants to play with me. Again. Molly, do you want us to put it back so that you can play again? Let's put it back on her string. It sure, sweetie. I do want to clarify that. But let's, let's put it back on here and see if we can play around with it again, okay? We've got another investigation spot to go to. All right. That's helping. Or... No, you're fine. I'm just not used to tying them on while they're on somebody, but I just wanted to get at least a good little on it. What'd she say? Alright, it's tight. See? Yeah. Can you do that one more time? Yeah. Back on, Molly. All right, well, I think that signified that you wanted to do that instead of the pendulum, huh? <laughs> well, she likes my bow. All right, well, cool. Oh, no. All right, well, is there anything that you guys want to tell us before we cut the spirit box off? We're getting ready to head into town. All right, I got to answer that one. I'll miss you too, but you can go with us, Sam. Are you going to go with us? I always miss you. Sam, if you're going to go with us, can you tell me you're going? Can you say Thank you. Hi, baby? Sam, thank you. Molly, if you're going to go with us, sweetie, will you let us know? See you later. All right, we are going, just so you guys know, we're headed over to Father O'Reilly's, okay? All right. Guys, don't leave us, okay? I'm gonna cut the box off. We're gonna close our session here, okay? Molly and Sam, Captain, any of our good spirits are welcome to go with us. Anyone else needs to stay behind.
Thank you for talking with us, guys. We'll see you guys in just a short bit, okay? Okay, thank you, guys. You're going with... Okay, good. All right. All right. I'm going to leave the recorder going for a moment while I pack up. All right, guys. Can I turn my cell phone light on? Yeah, sure. Okay. Absolutely. Is that okay, Dad? Feel free. You can turn cool. lights on. Whatever you want to do, guys. Going to the keeper's grounds, but it went under new management a couple years ago. Mm. And we kind of joke and say they paved paradise and put up a parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> they shut, they shut, a, put a fence around it and was like, no. Did Cape Hatteras get their design off of this one? Good question. They are very, very similar. Right. Um, Cape Hatteras is taller, but if I can remember right, I think this one is slightly older. Not by much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Go right ahead. Now, this is one of those houses that's kind of funny, but something really cool about this tree that I've noticed in the summer when we have a really dry spell, this tree will actually leave and create its own rainwater, which is pretty fascinating. I need a flash. Sometimes uh, we can stand underneath it and hear it weeping. Yeah. From over here. Is that good? Here you go, look next to it. Okay, so it's an oak tree and a palm a tree palm. combined. Wow. That's fascinating. It is. From the 1880s. Yes. This is the oldest street in America. It is. Mom, you cannot have a brick. <laughs> Now, speaking of old, this is a private residence right here, so can we get a green signal again real quick? All right, we'll find out who that is. Let's, let's get all of our stuff out here. We've got kind of, I try to mix it up and put some, this is not anything ghostly, it's a pumpkin light, everybody has asked. It's just because it's fun. And it's kind of like the moth drawn to the flame oh, kind of like, thing. Because my jingle bells oh, are yeah. jingling, jingling. Yeah, some of the horses. <laughs> they are really cool. They are jingling, jingling. All right, flashlights. All right, if somebody's at the flashlight, it was close to me setting it down. So I have to kind of rule it out because I may not have set it very steadily. I did see it move, but. I, I was gone from it, but. It could have been that I just didn't stabilize it well. If somebody did move the flashlight, can you roll it back the other direction now that we're all far away from it? Sorry to ask if that was somebody that actually did move it. I just want to make sure because it was close to the time that I had set it down. And if you're there and you're trying to roll it for us, can you dim it or either brighten it up and let us know that you're there? Now, flashlights I didn't do at the lighthouse. I kind of like... If I put the recorder over here, will you talk to us? Will you light it up green if you guys will talk with us? Can we get some talking on the recorder? I'm going to put it right here by the EDI. How about that? Kind of in between there. All right. Recording two. We are now at Father O'Reilly's at the well. We will run the spirit box in just a moment. Can you get the um, blue light to go off? Do you have enough energy to do the blue light? Thank you for lighting that up, whomever that may be. Can we have a blue light on there? All right, what did I do? There's the K2 meter, okay, I'm trying to get this out. All right, just to check, um, cell phones don't manipulate that one, but does everybody have their phone in airplane mode still? I just put it on it. Yeah. Okay, perfect. How about you guys? Are y'all in airplane on your phones and watches right and such? I'm going to double check. I don't think I ever went out. Nope, I'm still in. Visiting with you tonight. If you are, can you flash it back to green, please, sir? If you're all right with us being in your orange, thank you. Okay, good deal. And this is Father O'Reilly's old orange groves. And he did something really amazing for the city of St. Augustine. Father O'Reilly, I'm gonna brag on you in a, on a, on, for a moment. Um, Father O'Reilly 
moved into this home in the late 1700s, lived here till the mid 1800s. When he came to St. Augustine as a Catholic priest, you could not be educated here if you were a person of ethnicity. Ethnicity was anything other than Spanish Catholic. Father O'Reilly wanted to change that. The area where Yeah, I'm not picking up on them either. Hmm. Is there anybody else in spirit here, Father O'Reilly, or is it just yourself? If it's just yourself, can we get just a green light? If it's just you, just a green light. Okay, so that was yellow. All right, is it someone else? Is Daniel here with you? If young Daniel is here, can we get, can you do another light, Father O'Reilly? Can you get the blue? Do you have enough energy to get the blue lit up? It's on the back side over there, towards your house. Let's try our spirit box real quick. Father O'Reilly, we're going to... responded like